Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to start talking about continuity, which is mixed in with our limit section because there's a really strong tie. We've talked about the fact that uh, limits really aren't a very interesting thing to talk about unless you're working on something that has a discontinuity. So let's go ahead and fully make that connection. Okay, so again, I have a preview activity for you here. So this entire page would be a great one to uh, work on ahead of me and then just come back and check in and make sure you've got the right idea before you move on. Okay, so here we've got a function it goes from negative four to four. Um, I have a bunch of questions to answer. And this right here, it's not actually something we see a lot, but it does come up occasionally, so I wanted to mention it. This is infinite oscillation. So we have like a sine wave sort of thing happening, going up and down and up and down, but it's getting, uh, the period is basically shrinking down and down and down so that this oscillation is happening infinitely quickly the closer we get to two on the right-hand side. Okay, so we're supposed to determine at each of the integer x values if the limit exists and what the value of the limit is. Okay, so we want to look for the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x and then the same thing for negative 2 and negative 1 and 0 and this is not the fast part of you guys coming back and watching me do this sorry limit as x approaches 2 and last one limit as x approaches 3 okay so as x gets close to negative 3 our y values are getting close to 3 as x gets close to negative 2, the limit does not exist. We have different y values on either side. As x gets really close to negative 1, the whole doesn't matter because this is a limit, so just close. It looks like y is getting close to negative 3. 0, y is getting close to negative 4. At 1, what would I say this is? This is negative 3, this is negative 3.5, so it looks like negative 3.25 to me. At x equals 2, okay, so this infinite oscillation is basically just trouble is all I wanted to point out. Uh, we have the y values as we come in on the left getting really close to, it looks like, negative 2.5. But on the right, there's no way we can say they're bouncing back and forth so quickly that you can't say if my x is really close to 2, then my y will be close to something specific. All you can say is it'll be somewhere between negative 3.5 and negative 1.5. So this again is a does not exist. We don't like seeing infinite oscillation when we're trying to talk about things like differentiability and continuity. Differentiability is the derivative actually existing. As x approaches 3, last one, I don't see any problems there. So it looks like a negative 2.5. Okay, so there's the limits. We're now supposed to walk through each of those x values, and anywhere that the limit exists, we're supposed to find the value of the function. So we're trying to get to a comparison here. So we're going to ignore those two. So I want f of negative 3, f of negative 1, f of 0, f of 1, and f of 3. So f of negative 3 is 3. f of negative 1, oh, that's kind of an interesting one. It's not down there. It's up here. It's 1. f of 0 is negative 4. f of 1 is negative 3.25. And f of 3 is undefined. Okay, uh, now we're supposed to decide at which of the values of a. Okay, so the limit does not exist. Sorry, I got distracted by my own thing. When x equals negative 2 or 2. Okay, and then at which of the values is the function not defined? That's going to be 
Is there any other ones? I think it's just this one that we have here at x equals 3. At which values of a does f have a limit, but the limit does not equal the function value? That's what this says right here. The limit as x approaches a doesn't equal the y value at a. So let's see. The negative 3s match up. The negative 1s do not. Uh, the zeros do, the ones do. Wait a minute, at which value is it? I think I'm going to list three. We kind of already caught it here because it's not defined, but that is one where uh, the two don't match up as well. Okay, and now we're just supposed to, ignoring everything we just did, go ahead. Oh, shoot, sorry, there's my values. Uh, look at the graph and say when f is not continuous. So basically discontinuity is this pretty easy idea. Function is continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pencil. Anywhere you have to pick up your pencil, it's discontinuous. So looking at my graph, I have discontinuity at negative 2 and negative 1. This is fine. This is fine. The corner is fine. Uh, the infinite oscillation does count as a discontinuity, and then 3, there's definitely a discontinuity. So this one's kind of a weird one. It maybe doesn't follow your pick up the pencil, but it's trouble. So we have a discontinuity at, let's see what I wrote there, negative 2, negative 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so what you should notice here is... Uh, the discontinuity at negative 2 showed up in what basically, this is a problem list right here. So the problem with that one is that the limit didn't exist. So it already showed up in the stuff we were checking here. Negative 1 showed up because the value of the function doesn't match the value of the limit. So that one showed up in the things we were checking. Uh, 2, 2 showed up in the limit not existing. And then 3 showed up in a couple of spots. The uh, function is undefined there, and that means it doesn't match the value of the limit. So what we're really getting, out, getting at here is if you want to know if a function is continuous, you have to, to write that down formally, you have to actually do a really careful check. So the, the loose definition is pick up your pencil is a bad sign. The formal definition says uh, f is continuous at, sorry for the abbreviation, x equals a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a, which actually uh, means you have to check three things. That looks really easy, but you not only have to check and make sure that these two are equal, if either one of them doesn't exist, then you're in trouble. So you have to check that the limit exists. You have to check that f of a is defined. And then you have to check that they're equal. So one, two, and then... 1 and 2 have same value. So that's really what the check is about. 3. OK, um, another thing that's really kind of a nice byproduct of this, one last thing that I want to say here, is this is really verifying what we said before, which was if your function is continuous, limits are boring. So if you know your function is continuous, then you can just use this for free. We kind of have been already, but here it is officially. You don't have to worry about limit thinking. You can just plug in that x value to get your answer. Okay, so continuity. Your function has to be defined. The limit has to exist, and the value of the function has to match the value of the limit. That's what has to happen to make sure that you don't pick up your pencil. All right, thanks for watching.